They say history is a race between education and catastrophe. Thank you, Aaron Elster, for helping us here at Stevenson avoid a little catastrophe by bringing your own brand of history. Wiesel said, if we forget the deaths, it's akin to killing them again. Thank you for bringing to Stevenson your lessons that the past is never past. And by doing so, we here at Stevenson remain just a little bit more alive. Thank you. 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 Having Mr. Elster come in and talk to the students gives the students a, a perspective of the Holocaust that, that I can't give. I can go over the facts, I can go over the information, I can go over the policies, but that personal account that uh, Mr. Elster gives is invaluable. I think reading it in a textbook gives you the facts and you can understand it, but hearing someone talk or actually going to a site really brings it to life. A textbook lacks the human element. You don't get to see the person. You don't, it's not the visceral experience that having someone speak in front of you is. I went to Europe with my school and I was able to see a concentration camp and that brought it to life to be able to actually see it. But hearing speakers just adds another personal level to it which really makes it much more important. He really made a strong like picture in my head of what happened. Hearing it, you can visualize it. There's so much detail and there's so much emotion in it. I mean, you see movies, you've seen Schindler's List, you've seen The Pianist, and you've seen what happens. And of course it's sad, of course it's a tragedy to watch, but then when you see it in first person, it's a completely different experience. You see people, you see, you see their frustration, you see their sadness with what they say and how they try to express it. The sounds that he heard, the, the voices that cried and everything, that resonates with you. I felt like I was there and I felt how hard it must have been to be there. Reading a line in a textbook that says the Holocaust occurred and 11 million people died, it's not even comparable to the effect that it has. And I think seeing it in person really does help make it see more of a reality. I mean, this isn't someone that is a mythical figure or he is kind of like a superhero, but he's a real person and he has real, um, real emotions and he's human and that even even Mr. Elster says it's hard for him to forgive or he can't forgive um, but he promotes this message of not hating and so I think it's that, that kind of human connection that students strive for with written words they can't get with actually hearing from that person. And that's something a student will be able to take away with them long after they close a book. Because the reason I do what I do is you. My belief, my hope is in you. Because you, not too distant future, will be the decision makers. You will decide whether we're ultimately going to stop killing one another because of our differences. Because we're black, we're white, we're Jew, we're Gentile. The relationship from one person to another really should not have to be set by race or religion or what the color of your skin is. It should be how you act as a character, how you act as a person. Each one of you, each and every one of you can have a great impact on what life will be like in the future. Our generation is really the last one that will be alive to see these Holocaust speakers, so I'll be able to pass these stories on to the future generations. Out of the 6,000 Jewish people that lived in our town, only 29 people survived. Two children survived on their own. Two children from the whole town, my sister Irene and I. My poor dad dies in the gas chambers of Treblinka. My mother survives in hiding with this man. And about three months before we were liberated, Mrs. Gorski comes crawling into the attic to tell me that they just brought your mother in. Found out after the war that a neighbor of ours, a friend, Caught my mother hiding in his barn with this man. He called his field hands. They wrestled them to the ground. They tied him up, threw him on a wagon, brought him into town, turned him over to the Gestapo. And she shot in the town cemetery. And according to Mrs. Gorski, my mother was pregnant. I think it's an important message, especially in the world we live in today with this bullying epi epidemic that the United States is facing, that I think this is a topic that needs to be taught to future generations, our current generation, in making, connecting the relevancy of 
issues that we deal with today to issues that were being dealt with in the Holocaust. And I think Erin Elster does an amazing job of making that connection between bullying and bringing his story, um, making that connection with his students and making it relevant to them. People are still bullying and cyberbullying and all kinds of verbal abuse and that he just, he hates to see that society hasn't changed and that something as bad as the Holocaust could easily happen again today. And I want you to know that there's an old saying that probably none of you, most of you have heard that says that sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. Words, words, unkind words hurt much more than physical pain. Physical pain goes away. Whether it takes a day or a month, it goes away. But the names that you're called, the derogatory names that is referred to you and I stay with you forever. Bullying and this kind of harassing in general is not something that should be taken lightly. And every person in this school, in the entire world, can relate to this message of sticks and stones can break my bones and that it really shouldn't matter how you look, how you, how you, what you believe in as a person and that this should be a universal message and that everyone should be able to follow it. And if you're called a name or somebody says something mean to you, you're not going to forget that. Words have the ability to, to take someone's dignity away, to take someone's self-confidence away. And that's something that lasts a lot longer than any, any physical injury can. Through middle school, I was bullied pretty bad because, you know, I was apparently ugly and they used to make fun of me for being different. And I, it really kind of hit home for me because they turned me into something that was not human. And the start of making it easier for someone to turn you into nothing is to start with names. When you walk down the street or walk in the halls, people could say something that could impact you more than what you show on the outside and on the inside. Words hurt people more than people would actually think that they do. There's a point where you just can't ignore it anymore and you know names really can't hurt. Physical violence, while it's traumatic, doesn't really have the same psychological impact that verbal abuse does. You can, you can recover from physical pain, but recovering from emotional pain and recovering from being bullied is, is not something that's easy. I was bullied a lot in middle school, so taking the whole like, bullying thing, I kind of understood what he was saying. Because a lot of people, uh, they think, oh, just bullying is pushing someone, shoving them in the hall or something, and that's not true. He, he really made me think about the things that I say to, to others. He, he made me regret everything that I said because I know th those words st stuck to them. Also, he, he, he made me think about the things that I don't say and the things that I don't do that, that maybe sort of help someone when they need it the most. It makes me realize how, how much you do have to think about what you uh, tell students, what students talk, uh, what they say to other students, um, because those do last. You might think you're telling a joke, um, and you might think you're being funny, or, or you might not even mean to be as, as mean as, as, as something comes off, uh, but it, it really makes you realize and reflect on how powerful words can be. And it really helped make me more aware of just exactly how hurtful words can be, and it's really important to choose your words wisely. And especially with technology nowadays, I think it's much easier for words to spread and hurt more people faster. So it's really important to keep that in mind. And as teachers, we have to be very careful about how we address students because anytime an authority figure says something to a student that will be hurtful, it could stay with them for the rest of their lives. Um, I always talk with kids after Mr. Alter's presentation about the importance of agape love and that we're kind of fearful of using this word love in our classrooms and in our lives, but we use hate um, and hateful words all the time. And so I think it allows students and allows me to kind of take pause and reflect on what love means and how to live our lives in a more loving manner. And so I think that's so powerful, especially in light of kind of recent events and um, kind of the focus on kind of bullying in schools and how to create a positive school climate. Words have the ability to heal, words have the ability to destroy, so please be careful with what, with what you say. He didn't do this just for a history lesson, just to teach us what he was thinking. When he was talking to us, he wanted us, he wanted the youth to know that we are the only people that can create change. 
and hopefully we can create that for the better. So I plead with you to be careful how you use words, to be the upstanders instead of a bystander, to stand up and speak out when somebody calls somebody a name or is being unkind for no particular reason to a fellow student to stand up and say that it's wrong. You don't know. You don't realize what an impact you can have on the life of another human being with a simple gesture like that. A lot of our kids are fundamentally decent, kind people, but they take it for granted. And to, to, to be asked to be exposed to, to this message in this way is so powerful and it sort of snaps them out of their out of their comfort zone of the, oh yes I'm a nice person oh yes my friends are fundamentally nice people and it's like oh wait a minute maybe I actually do need to think about myself. I think Mr. Elser's uh, presentation is one of incredible survival but also um, just an incredible kind of hope for humanity that people like Mr. Elster exist that they can survive such hatred and such bitterness um, at such a young age and come out so vibrant, young, optimistic, hopeful, and, and kind of kind and loving in his life. Sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Thank you, Mr. Elster.